Hello, everybody. I recently did some exploration with the TCP232-T2, which is a uh, entry-level model to this. This one is a industrial TIM4 solution. And in addition to all the wonderful features of the T2, it also has, it's here, I know it's here. Look at that. Support one channel web socket. Realize bidirectional transparent transmission between web page and serial zero. And look at that. I have it doing that. My microcontroller is sloppy video. My microcontroller much better. My microcontroller, I just programmed it to count up. There's an integer counting up, but it could have been one of the A to D registers counting up. Could have had a thermistor in there, a number of devices. Anything you can interface with the microcontroller can talk to the internet or the network through this device because of this. It's a serial Ethernet module. Look at everything you can do here. A lot of solutions, a lot, lot, lots of ways to integrate this with your um, TI, they call it. I think that stands for, I have to look that up again, integration, something integrate, technology integration, or telecommunications interfacing or implementation. I had to look up the definition. I'm seeing that a lot lately, TI. So let's see what we're going to do. Industrial TI, yeah, telecommunications implementation. Could stand for a lot of things, maybe the men IT. Okay, so let's explore this device. I'm gonna keep it simple, a lot of software here. Basically, it's the same, more or less the same as the E2. One little hiccup, the website. Use the one for the 410S. That's a step up and that's the one that came, that, that is the one that the product came with. So I'm gonna close this right now. We're gonna do anything more with this. This was my starting point. First of all, I had to learn a lot about JavaScript and WebSockets and the API and understanding that. They have a sample application here, nice and simple. But what I did was I took a look at the source. We can look at the source on the page. But you can also get the source from the upgradable web page. And look at that. Wasn't easy. Okay, this looks a lot simpler than uh, the one on the page. Not sure why. Maybe we're not seeing everything from the source. However, it was a huge challenge to uh, understanding the JavaScript in this and connecting to this device, but I overcame that challenge. So in a nutshell, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to close that. This is the actual code. Okay, that looks more, make, that makes a lot more sense. That's what I got here. Look at all that JavaScript here. A lot of functions here. You have to establish a WebSocket connection with your device, which we did here. A lot of functions here. This is standard in the API. This does a lot of extra work, and it didn't use it all on the website that they provided. So this was a starting point for me, and I simplified a little bit. I added a connect and close button, added the title WebSockets, back to our HTML here. And I'm starting to understand all of this, which is a beautiful thing. So I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close that. OK. This is the beautiful part about it. Everything was done on the web page, all the, all the programming to interface to the WebSocket on this device. All I had to do was use serial communications to on the microcontroller. So look at that. I initialized my UARTs, my ports. I got a counter going. Where's my counter? Here's a counter. Uh, it's updating every 200 uh, milliseconds. So that's 5 hertz. And I've got bidirectional communications. Now look at that. Five cycles per second every 200 milliseconds. Let's do a bit of that math. This has been running for a while. Very pleased with that. Let's get my calculator out. 
Uh, let's just say 36,000. Divided by 200 milliseconds, so 0 0.2. 0 0.2 seconds. That's the total number of seconds. Ooh, that's a lot of seconds. Divided by 60, that should give me my minutes. 3,000 minutes divided by 60. Okay, it's been going for a while. 50 hours, I did something wrong. 36,000 is my count. Ah, each count is 0.2 seconds. That's there we go. I'm on the tail end of a cold. Two hours. Exactly. It's been going for exactly two hours. Let's make it 3,700. Can I enter these numbers? I'm going to be this 3,700 point. Yeah, I probably am. Just a little over two hours. Look at that. Now, I can... <laughs> I don't want to do this. The clear button actually doesn't work because I'm overriding it. It keeps updating with the count. So I can clear it. It'll keep updating with the value of the counter, the integer counter, 16 bits, 2 bytes, coming from the microcontroller. So I've added a way to clear this. And if I remember, I used an R. Whoops. Yes. I said an R. It clears it. Look at that. And if I send a zero, not a hex is zero, but an ASCII zero, it turns my LED off. If I send an ASCII one, it turns my LED on. And an ASCII zero, it turns my LED off. Very cool. There's a lot of potential in this. And I can, I can just see myself having some fun with this as my uh, skill set is evolving and growing each day. Okay. I'm very happy with this. So that's it for now. Remember, a lot of resources on the uh, USR IoT website. If you need help with them, you just drop me a note. I know where they are. I've scoured them all. I've gleaned through all of them. There's a lot of useful information in there. Sometimes you have to look at the other products to get a little more information out of how to use the more basic products. That's it for now. I think I'm going to stop this video and go make a tea. Have a good day.